In 1990, this gifted teacher and administrator stepped down from his job as a college president in order to care full-time for his wife, Muriel, who suffered from Alzheimer's disease. But instead of considering it a burden, he called it a privilege. Caregiving is a role that many people dread, and it can bring a great deal of stress into a marriage. But the story of Robertson and Muriel McQuilkin is all about love and commitment and joy. Even while giving yourself to someone in need, I believe you'll find great encouragement and hope from their experience. Hi, I'm Dennis Rainey, and today I'd like to personally introduce you to one of my heroes, Dr. Robertson McQuilkin. Alzheimer's is called a cruel disease and, and uh, various other pejoratives, but there are benefits. It goes so slowly. And there's uh, a blessing in forgetfulness. You forget that you forgot. I was hardly aware of the losses because we were 25 years onto the journey into the darkness of Alzheimer's. A Promise Kept the story of Robertson and Muriel McQuilkin on this day of discovery. Robertson and Muriel were college sweethearts who never stopped being in love. I first saw Muriel at uh, Columbia Bible College. She was a year ahead of me, and I thought she was very beautiful. But she sat in front of me in chapel, immediately in front of me, and they had assigned seats. So she would run those artistic fingers through that long, beautiful chestnut hair right in front of me. It would drive me crazy. But uh, then we began to date, and Muriel was very full of life, vivacious, fun. But the thing that attracted me most was that she was a great lover of God, passionate lover of God. And she loved people. They married in 1948 and over the years were blessed with six children. After serving at a Christian high school in South Carolina, they spent 12 years in Japan. We were missionaries. We were pioneer church starters. She always seemed to put my ministry as a top priority, and so she fit in in every way she could in uh, chalk art. Uh, we didn't have a musician in the first little church we started, so she taught herself the concertina. And uh, she was helping in every way she could, entertaining, winning people to Christ. In 1968, Robertson became president of Columbia Bible College and Seminary. Muriel, always a gracious hostess, shared his affection for the students and loved to entertain. But then things began to change. Well, just about everything has changed. We didn't know for a time that it was changing, but back in 1978, we were in Florida visiting friends and she repeated a story that she had just told five minutes earlier. Didn't think too much of it at the time, but then on reflection, we realized that's when the memory began to fade. Uh, she began to fail. For example, it was more difficult to entertain and for a college president's wife not to be able to entertain but she always was resilient and she would cope with whatever was left and always a good cheer. So we didn't notice, she was good at covering. But she had some heart palpitations in 1983, which was five years later. And when we took her in for examination, the doctor suspected that perhaps it was Alzheimer's. In Robertson's book, A Promise Kept, he described Muriel as having a sense of agitation when they were apart. During a visit to Tokyo, 
She left their hotel room and disappeared into the city looking for him. At home in Columbia, she would leave their house and walk to the campus several times a day searching for him. Her gifts of communication and hospitality were overshadowed by an increasing fear and her irrational behavior. It was a painful dying, sort of, because here this vibrant, creative person was dimming out, and as she lost various abilities one by one, I realized that I could not continue on with the heavy responsibilities here and then care for her as I should. So there came a time in the late 80s when I said, I'm going to have to either give myself fully to the school or give myself fully to her. So um, I told the board this and told them they should begin to look for a successor. So I enjoy. I enjoyed learning how to cook. I enjoyed learning how to keep house. I really liked my job as a homemaker. But uh, there are spiritual resources. There are human resources. My sisters live nearby. They've retired, and they're very loving and caring. Some people say they pray that I'll have patience. So how do I know? Maybe that's the reason it's not a temptation, because people pray. But there are some things I know the Lord has done. And I discovered what I've discovered repeatedly, and I'm a slow learner, and that is uh, a heavy spirit lifts on the wings of praise. And when I turned my thoughts toward the Lord, then I found the joy rekindling, and I found the passion of love for Him returning. So we do turn to the Lord for our resources when there's a special need. Once in a while, I think of what she was, and, and then, of course, a wave of grief comes over, but that's uncommon and not too often. You know, the world is full of people that don't have companionship, and I don't reflect on that. But, of course, I do a lot of companioning with the Lord, and that doesn't fill in for a wife but it also has other dimensions that a wife can't provide. Actually, you could say it's a liberation because I'm free to devote myself to the one I love, and something that was very limited before. Perhaps my busyness before would change that kept me from devoting myself wholly to her, but uh, I haven't had any sense of, of confinement because of that. I think it has to do with your outlook in life. And if I find my identity in a job that I have, if my meaning is all involved in what I accomplish and what I do, this can be a very confining thing. But if it has to do with relationships and who I am, and then it can be quite liberating. Life is simpler now, no longer knitting these two lives with threads of conversation, but with the wordless assurances of love, the motions of my soul more deeply tender, hammered by the blows of adverse winds, love more pure and tense emerges from the fire. Life is simpler now, God's good gift for two busy people who celebrate the past and quietly wait with hope. So there was that morning that uh, they had told me that she didn't have more than a week or two and I was shaving in the next room and I heard sounds that were strange and I said, Shall I finish shaving or shall I go check? I said, no, I'll go. And I stopped in the middle of my shave and went in and she was leaving me. So uh, I embraced her. For her, there was release, of course. Joy with the Lord fulfilled. As someone had told me, Twelve years earlier, the next face Muriel sees that she knows will be Jesus. And that's the way it was.